Hello, I'm David Burris with Clare and Forge, and this is Damascus Day at Clare and Forge. We're going to be putting together some Damascus billets from scratch, and uh, I'm going to actually uh, leave most of the work to my apprentices today. They're, they're learning how to do this today. This is Caleb and David, and uh, they're going to be showing you how we're going to prepare these billets. What we're going to make here, by, by what we call Damascus, is really pattern welded steel. Uh, we've got alternating layers of low and high carbon steel. And the only thing I've done as far as prepping this is I've taken the 5160 leaf spring pieces and annealed them. And uh, the annealing process is you bring them up to a non magnetic heat and then bury them in wood ash or vermiculite or some insulating material that's going to let them cool really slowly. Uh, to take all the, the tension and the hardness out of them. So, uh, first thing they're going to do is we're going to uh, grind both sides of these completely clean and shiny on each of these pieces. And uh, the reason for that is when you're doing a forge weld, any rust or, or scale or anything left on there will create a, a, a inclusion that won't, won't let the material bond together properly. So we're going to shine these up and we're going to arc weld the top and bottom of them together and then uh, we'll weld a, a handle on them just to make them easier to, to work in the fire and then we will start the forging process. So just Get both sides of, of each one of them shiny and we'll go from there, fellas. pieces nice and shiny all the way through so I'm going to fit these together, squeeze them up in the vise and weld the ends together. Uh, we'll weld the one end together so we can attach a handle. We're going to attack the other end just so when we put it in the fire it doesn't tend to fan apart and get inclusions in there. So uh, anyway, that, uh, as, as we forge weld this and draw it out and fold it, all the, the extra material we're adding from the weld will eventually be cut off. That's not going to be part of the final bill. So it's not going to hurt anything. Encountered it during the Crusades and with the 
Syrians or, or whoever, the Arabs, so they thought it came from Damascus, is how it got its name. Uh, it actually goes way farther back than that. The, what they were encountering, the original material, came from India. Uh, it was called Wootz, W-O-O-T-Z. And uh, it had uh, natural stratifications just from the way the iron the ore was formed, uh, which was a, a mixture of low and high carbon steels. Uh, the, uh, the, you know, most cultures had a way of doing this. You hear a lot about the, uh, uh, of course, the Japanese samurai swords and all that. The, uh, the Vikings had a, a way of pattern welding steel. But what it amounts to, the reason they came up with this at all was uh, iron in its natural state is uh, fairly soft material. The, uh, <clears throat> it was really labor intensive to make a high carbon steel. The only way they had of adding carbon to the iron to make steel was to put the soft iron in an airtight with a pottery vessel of some sort with uh, organic material like leather and bone and leaves and layered in there with all this stuff, put it in the fire and keep the fire just really hot around this thing in this airtight space till all that carbon burnt up in there and the carbon would leach into the iron when it got hot enough to accept it. So it's very labor intensive to make a small amount of carbon steel. So in order to make it last longer, they, they came up with the idea of, of putting thin layers of this in between layers of the softer iron and forge welding it, it's, it's like mixing ingredients in the bread dough, you're just kneading it throughout so by the time you're finished you can make a, a long sword that has a fairly high carbon content but you didn't have to make it all out of that precious high carbon steel. So the, uh, <clears throat> the end result was though that not only does it make it stronger and more flexible and holds a good edge, but it's very beautiful. The, where those layers overlap, we start to forge weld them as we fold them. It's after the, the blade is finished and, and sanded and polished, then we etch it in a, some sort of an acid etchant to bring those, everywhere those layers of dissimilar steel meet will create a pattern. Just, it's really beautiful and, and makes a really high quality piece of steel as well. Uh, <clears throat> another thing you hear a lot about, you know, people are just in awe of how many layers a piece of Damascus might have in it. What you have to bear in mind is every time we make a, a weld and a fold, the numbers are growing exponentially. Like we're starting out with five layers here. So the first forge weld we make, you know, it's five layers. The second one, when we fold it, we've got ten. The next time we fold it, we've got twenty. So, it's, it, we're, we're going to probably do about six welds on each one of these billets. And that will give us a, a good number of layers that will give us an interesting pattern. And there's some things we're going to do to manipulate that pattern as well. And when we get farther along into starting to make the knives, we'll, we'll show you how some of that plays out. And that one, as my grandmother used to say, is the one the shoemaker killed his wife with. The last. Got a, <clears throat> since we've got a lot of these to do, what we're going to do is make the initial weld on all of them so that in case we don't get to complete them all today, we won't have wasted all that grinding time on the inner surfaces. So once that the initial weld is made, it's easy to polish the two outside edges up before you have to start again. <clears throat> 